What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, people? What's going on? It's your boy, and very unique. It's let me hear your scream. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, welcome, 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 man. It's your boy, Imperial Negus. Yes, you can find my clothing at thehiddenmajesty.com. Please hit the email if there's any complications with anything. Also, you can find me at N-I-C-K-E-X-P-7. If you're looking for an apartment, condo, house, looking to sell your house, lease your apartment, looking for an agent, I am the guy to do so, and this particular topic is God will never leave you because he is experiencing you, and you can't leave something you experience. And let me give you an example, people. Oh, Oh, yeah. All right, people, let's get into this topic. Let's get into this topic. Now, let's contrast it. On something like, say, a creature. We're human beings. We're able to perceive and put our minds in places where the average creature cannot put their minds in. But the average creature can enhance features of itself by thinking only of itself. But we have been tested. We have been challenged with the ability to think on levels of universal laws, creature perspectives, you name it, insect perspectives, whatever you choose to, whatever you choose to study. But it's all about your interests because you don't want to take on too much. Now, let's use a bird analogy. Yes, a bird because it's free and it's of high altitude. But there's something special about the bird. How it was raised. The mother bird and father bird, they mate. They get together and they mate. The mother does most of the taking care of the bird. Now think about the technology, the faculties of the baby bird's mind as the mother is taking care of the baby bird. The baby bird feels nurtured, protected, covered, feels its warmth, feels its mother's humming of sweet songs. It's voice when it's arguing with the father, making love to the father, trusting the father. It can feel it through the mother's nervous system because it's connected to what it came out of as it's connected mentally and genetically and biologically through what it is, which is the seed. But it's connected emotionally to what it came out of. As it is protected with this, you know, colostrum fluid and all these things, right? Even coming out of the canal, like it, the 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 very v- vaginal canal, it s- protects the skin, right? Now, the baby bird is feeling this connection of the mother. Mother's always there, bringing back food, feeding it, teaching how to eat, teaching it not to take on too much, separating it from his brothers and his sisters. But for the most part, <clears throat> the birds or the bird is by itself because the mother has to test it and challenge it on how to fly. Are you being tested and challenged this way? Think of the technology, right? I call it technology because that's what it is, right? The true technology, the true psychology of the baby bird's mind and what it goes through as a baby. Not as a grown bird, right? Which makes it easier to kind of put it off, but as a baby bird. So it's in the nest. Mother ain't there this time. It's cold. Thunderstorms. It's rain. It's hawks. Eagles. Seagulls. All type of different sounds that are unfamiliar to the bird and its mother. Then there are singing sounds, sweet sounds, there are melodic sounds, melodies, or even different sounds from other birds that sound unfamiliar from its own species. All these things are factored in 
to the baby bird's brain. And you got to wonder why. Why are there so many sounds? Why not voices and words? What's the difference between melodies and sounds and actual words? You see, the words come out as we comp- come, we start to comprehend words for meanings. But sounds, my friend, sounds come out in the way in how we began as a tribe, as a people, through songs. We feel that. They feel that naturally. We feel that just temporarily. Hear a good song. Feel good for that moment. Go ahead. It's their nature to go with sounds. I believe they telepathically, you know, talk, but through sounds, different sounds. So as the baby bird is in there and it's going through fear and it's going through self-doubt and it's going through mystery. And it's even consciously or subconsciously talking to the very God that put it on his earth and is asking itself why. Why would you have me feeling so begotten, so abandoned? Where is my mother? Why am I in this world? What is my purpose? Those are the very things that is going to cause that bird to walk to the edge and believe in the invisible net enough to fly. And it stands with fear and the courage is developed. And it's at that very moment that the courage is developed is the very moment where it makes up its mind for the first time. Now, the mother's over there. She watching. She come over every once in a while, drop some worms or whatever, you know, drop, drop some things or whatever. You know, making sure that the bird is fed. But she flying off most of the time, watching from an edge, seeing the bird scream and wiggle and Moved side by side. She want to go over there, but she ain't going over there. She, she, huh, no. Dad like, let him, let him find out. Let him soothe himself. Let him figure it out. Let him go through what he go through. Sounds familiar. Remember when Jesus was on the cross being crucified? You remember when he was like, oh, Father, why would you forsake me? And then all of a sudden he resurrected. It became a spiritual form of sense. He was flying then, higher than ever, actually. Sounds like somebody experienced something and made a a similar thing of itself, uh, I would say. And it sounded like man went and wrote something based upon that analogy or this analogy. Right? Because the bird is what is what created the plane. The very technology of studying the bird. And the technology of how the bird is made is how the plane eventually was made. So the bird, you know, hearing all these sounds and hearing all these melodies and, and its mirror neuron capturing all, all the all the all the things that's going on outside and it's curious and it's and it's and it's, it, it's seeing itself through what's going on outside enough to stand up, wobble to that edge. Look down, look left and right, and think, and then go right back in the nest. Walk to the edge again. Look left, right. Call out his mom. <coughs> mom ain't coming. Daddy ain't coming. But they can hear you. And sometimes they come down and they protect you. They watch you sleep. Just to make sure you're there. That's it. And then they go flying off again. You know, it can't give you too much because then you won't know true value of independence. Flying, flying of your own. Take it for granted. Much like how as a bird and is grown, I believe it, it takes certain things advantage eventually. And it got to think. So, gets up on an early morning. Sun is rising. It's warm. Birds are humming out there. They're having fun. They're playing. They're saying things. Curiosity. Mixed with faith. Mixed with being tired of waiting. In that nest. Brings it to that edge. Think of the bravery. 
Think of the evolution. Finally, he looks down. The mother looks from afar. Oh, no. He's doing it again. <laughs> the mother finds his strength inside of it because it knows how it was raised. It knows the very technology, the very faculties. It knows the very workings and the moving parts of the baby bird's mind because of what it been through. And it watches the baby bird proudly fall off of that nest. Now, when the baby bird falls off the nest, sometimes the mother's not there to see that. She just prays that he he learns. Sometimes she is there to see that. And she is she she can't go swoop that bird up go falling that fast. At least most of the time, if not all the time. So the baby bird's falling fast, trying to flap his wings, but it's flapping too fast. And we all know, just like water, when there's too much tension, you'll never float. You'll never truly swim. The water can sense the tension in your nervous system. It can sense that you're not for the water just by your tension. It can make you heavier. Your nervous system, we talk about, in water. But if you were to let go and swim the appropriate way, legs move in the appropriate way, the, the perfect geometry, right? Movement and form. It will determine how faster you swim, how much you will float, and how farther you would go. So the bird finds this through fear and failure, trial and tribulation, flapping his wings too fast. Eventually, it remembers other birds, the tag games they were playing in groups, following the leader and tagging the leader and knocking other people out of their place, if you notice. They knock other people out of their place. They play with people's feathers and they'll, they'll fly in the direction, but they have to follow the leader and how they go left and right, but try to knock other people from doing it. It's so fun to the bird. The baby bird sees that. It knows that. Finds the courage in itself through mirror neurons of wanting to be those birds, wanting to be that singing, wanting to be that soaring, wanting to be that independent. Because of that mystery. Pushes itself up one good time. Starts a sense of float. The wind underneath the wing is kind of lifting it after a while. Of it just calming down after all that fluctuation and it's sinking and it feels like a little push under there. Almost like the air is made for the way and how the wing is formed and designed. Like, wow, one plus one equals two. I wonder what two plus one equals. Three. Wow. You know? What does three plus one then equal? Four. Shit, what does three plus two equal? And math is put through the technology and how the wing moves. And how the wing is designed and the moving parts and how they work in the mind. And everything becomes in sync until it is comfortable with flying itself. The wind underneath the wing pushes it up, and as it soars, it gives it just enough time to regain its energy, and then it's, it, it, just, it just starts flapping, depending on how fast and what direction it goes. If it looks left, it goes left. If it looks right, it goes right. No different than like a boat or something like that. All made like the bird. And it realizes when it comes back to its nest and it comes back and it's there that it can make it on its own. And his mother finally shows up. And though it feels the grudge and the abandonment and the begottenness, it understood that through the hardships, through the abandonment, through the mysteries, through, through the doubt, through the sounds, it was a very reflection of the potential it has. Imperial Negus people, please tune in.